This trick is a masterpiece. Many of you will already understand what's happening here, but for those of you who don't, I'll give you one minute to think about it while I discuss how you can make one of these from cubes. After that, I will share with you one way that we can consider what's going on here by using some really simple mathematical reasoning. The process begins with cubes, and those begin with square stock. Mine was two centimeters by two centimeters. Perfect cubes are much easier to make in theory than in practice. One good tip that I can give you is to use short lengths of stock when you're making your cubes. The reason for this is because if your stock is longer than the fence on the table saw, it might not sit as flat against the fence and you'll get pieces that are less consistent. We're working with pretty tight tolerances with such little cubes, so we want this gap to be as small as possible. You could all but eliminate it if you use a jointer, but if you don't have a jointer, the easy way is to just cut using short pieces. Next, we cut them for length. You can use a miter saw, but I think my favorite way is to use a table saw sled. It's nice to have calipers for doing something as picky as a puzzle made out of cubes, but if you don't have access to such a thing, it's okay. Just compare the width of your stock to the cuts you just made. If you do this on a piece of glass, you should be able to get parts that are within a few human hairs of one another, which, by the way, is about two thousandths of an inch. So, what about these little chamfered edges on these cubes? Well, that is certainly one way. It was actually a lot faster than I thought it would be. But this is unquestionably my favorite way to do it. I made an entire video series about this device. It's rather boring, but cut me a break. It was one of my earliest videos. Since posting that, I've put nut knobs on it, addressed the dust collection with a rubber hose, and I've also oriented the sander at a minor angle so that the belt doesn't just go perfectly parallel with the edge that you're sanding. This way, since the belt is angled a little bit, more surface area of the belt is being used to make the edge. By the way, I make these nut knobs by pressing a quarter twenty nut down into a larger nut using the vise, and they make a wonderful alternative to a wing nut. Once you start using these, you'll want to put them everywhere. Before I get on with forever spoiling the trick for you, I would like to briefly hit on two topics that are related to cubic puzzle making. One is construction, and the other is painting. So long as we're just making one puzzle and we're not getting into production, we can just use some clamped pieces of wood like this and make sure they're square and then clamps are sufficient to build the pieces on. If you do have to make multiple copies then dedicated jigs are the way you want to go. 
I orient each of my cubes in an every other sort of checkerboard pattern with respect to their grain, and that just helps to evenly distribute any variations dimensionally. I glue them one at a time, and I pin them with 18 gauge brad nails. It's a bit of an art to keep from hitting your nails as you progress, but it takes a little bit of trial and error and just practice. The cost is very small in case you make a mistake. With a puzzle like this that's just restricted to two dimensions, either this way or this way, there are really only two conditions that arise. Either you'll need to pin from this direction or you'll need to pin from this direction. This one's no problem here on the edge of the table, but in this case we can just slide the entire setup over to the edge and now the pin nailer can easily get here. It's very important that you have it secured because the force transferred from the pin nailer through the blocks into the stop, if this stop gives, the pin nail won't set the entire way. This puzzle was painted with spray paint. Don't use spray paint. It's costly and not time efficient. The better alternative, and what the alternative that gives you much more vivid colors, is to just use acrylic paints and then coat them with a spray lacquer. I'll show you the comparison. So once again, I'm recommending that you use acrylic paint and then just top coat it with spray lacquer. Acrylic paint is very inexpensive and you get these wonderfully bold colors. These are held in contrast to these pieces, which belong to a puzzle called the Rubik's Bricks. And they were done just using spray paint. And finally, let's return to our main topic. What is going on here? Let's think of the fraction three quarters, but try not to think of it as three out of a total possible of four. Think of it as the ratio of three to four. When you do that, then we can double, double the numbers both in the numerator and denominator and have the ratio six out of eight. They're actually the same thing. And a calculator can show us that. 3 divided by 4 is, you guessed it, 0.75. And if you do the same thing with 6 divided by 8, it will also be the same. A mathematical expression is really meaningless without us to apply meaning to it. So in the case of our ratio 3 quarters or 3 fourths, we can also think of it as a triangle, where the triangle is the ratio of 3 to 4. So if we were to compare this triangle to a different triangle that had lengths, say, 6 and 8, we would find that the two triangles have the same ratio number. And so the triangles are similar, and that means that all of their angles will be the same. So what we're really seeing here are three different types of triangles. The puzzle is a misdirection because it implies that all three triangles are similar, but they are not. So the three triangles are the green 2 by 5, the red 3 by 8, and the overall puzzle, which is 5 by 13. You should note that you can still draw a comparison between the three different triangles by reversing these numbers, say 5 to 2, which would be 2.5, you'll get a different set of numbers, but once again, I want to emphasize that the numbers are really meaningless. It is us who get to decide what the numbers mean, and in this case, the numbers mean the ratio of the height to the base. I suppose we could also classify the puzzle as an illusion, because its presentation is somewhat misdirecting as well. 
you can't really see how they're different. But if you hold them a certain way, the slight variation in their angles becomes apparent up here. So the short answer, this is your missing cube. Now don't let this confuse you that three times four is 12, which would be the total area of a rectangle with side lengths three and four. This is because the area of a rectangle is base times height, and the area of a triangle is one half base times height, for obvious reasons.